and welcome to Beads Jar. My name is Billy, and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how you can do the peyote stitch to make your very own selection of midi rings and rings. We'll be demonstrating the patterns and how you can change and make these patterns yourself at home. I will just point out the one midi bracelet uh, ring here I've got is using brick stitch, but the rest are peyote. I hope you enjoy the tutorial. beautiful ring selection today. I'll be working with the Mayuki size 11 Delica beads. I've got three colour choices and that really is up to you whichever colours you want to work with. We'll be using the peyote stitch for our weave and as you can see I've got some examples here so I've made midi rings. This one's a slightly wider midi ring with the peyote stitch and then I have a different, slightly different design for a lower ring as well. And this really, as, you, as we progress with the tutorial, you'll see how, how we can make these longer or shorter. This is another midi ring, but this is actually brick stitch. So if you are trying to re replicate this particular one, it is brick stitch, not peyote. And that is just a little midi ring there. So that's with the size 11 Delicas. I have just some O beads as my starter beads, but that's up to you what you want to use. And we have our fire line, which is a six pound fire line. My precision scissors and a size 10 beading needle. I'll be starting the tutorial showing you how to make this design throughout a larger ring, which I'll make as a normal ring size on the base of the finger and showing you how to finish these off. And I'd highly recommend some graph paper. This way you can actually lay out. So if you didn't want to do the spiral effect that I've done here, you can actually plan whichever order of beads. So this um, pyramid shape, if you wish, or just alternating between the colors. So let's go and get started. To get going with our project, we're going to pick up a starter bead. So in this case, I'm using an O bead, but anything we'll do, we'll be taking this off at the end. So I'm just going to take that onto my beading needle, which is a size 10, and I've cut a good generous arm length for this project of the fire line. So I'm going to take my O bead down my thread, and for this one, I'm going to leave maybe about an eight centimeter tail of thread. So I've got my O bead on and I'm just going to go back through. So that gives me my starter bead and just one second time so it doesn't slide too easily along my thread. I would recommend to make it easier for you to actually sellotape this starter end down because at the beginning of your peyote stitch it can be a bit bouncy until we start weaving more beads on it. So I'm just going to put a small bit of tape across the starter bead so that this doesn't move around too much as we're doing our first rows in the stitch. On this one I'm just going to be working as I mentioned with this pattern so I'm using the gold and the purple colour in my Delicas. So there's my starter bead. And I've also got to the side of my graph just if I need to write down which colours I'm working with next. So I'm going to pick up five of the purple. And five of my gold and I'm going to take them down the thread to the O bead here. I'm just going to move this project up a little so that you can see clearly what I'm doing. There we go. So that's the first row and then so I might refer to this first row 
and then lines. So the lines are actually going to be coming across from one bead outwards. So the first row we have 10 beads. Next what you need to do is to pick up the bead that's going to sit aside this last gold bead. And in this one we want another gold delica. Now to do your priority stitch, we pick up the bead and then we're going to take the needle, so I'm just going to move this down so you can see clearly. We're going to take the needle back through the second bead in our first row. So you want to come through that bead and up with your thread. Now the beginning is always the most fiddly because they just want to move around. These two beads at the bottom are wanting to sit side by side. So you're just gently teasing your thread through and getting them to sit next to each other like so. As you progress with the threading, your tension will get better. So don't worry if they're bouncing around a little bit at the beginning. Okay, so now we can add our next row along. So either using your chart or this pattern if you wish, I'll move that into the screen. So when we do, we've got this bead which we've just started on our next row up. So it's another gold and we're going to pick up another gold. So I'm picking up my gold and I'm going to miss the next bead and we want to go through the one above that. So you take your needle through and just through the one bead. We're just going to pull that up. When you'll be doing this, it does get a lot faster. I'm just breaking it down very slowly so that you can see what's happening. So this is our second row going up. So you can see we're adding in between the spaces and creating a slight zigzag effect throughout the beading here. So now you go back to your chart. So we've done one, two, and the next bead is gonna be a purple. So we're picking up our purple we miss out this next bead and go through the one above it. So missing the gold and we're going to go through the purple bead. Just the one there. So my thread's now coming out next to the purple bead and we're going to go ahead and pick up the next one and continue to the top of this row where we will come out of our first bead that we started our project with. So I'm just going to continue with purples on this row. So we miss that one and through the next. another purple and now we're coming out of the last bead but the first that was on our first row so the first line that we started with and my cords just looped under so we'll just pull it back and pull that tight so this is the very start of our project and you can see we've started to get some sort of pattern going and we're going to be working back down. In order to do that, so we've got our very first bead here, we're going to pick up another purple that's going to sit next to that. So you're going to come down and you go through the bead below it. So not the first, but the second bead. And as you come down, you'll see that the purple bead is going to sit next to that first bead as well. go and we're going to keep coming down this row 
always keep checking your reference as well for the colours that you need next. So we're on the second one and then we need another purple and then we'll go on to gold. So one purple and we're going to come down to the next bead on our row. And then we are going to pick up our gold and again through the next bead down which is the gold one and then you go on to purple to create our spiral here. So keep using your reference as you're going along. And you're just going to continue making up the whole pattern until you've got the length that will go around your ring. And then once you're there, I'm going to show you how you connect these ends off together and finish off our starter bead where we'll take the bead off and be tucking that back into our design, giving you the beautiful tube that goes all the way around. So by now you've continued with your graph and your peyote stitch and you should have the length of your ring. And this is where we started with our starter O bead. You some may notice I have changed colour thread. Uh, this was because I pre-prepared the project a bit in advance. So we're at the end. What you do need to make sure before we move on is that the length you've chosen, the stitch pattern is going to slot together. So like brickwork, so they're going to slide in perfectly and harmoniously together. Otherwise you just need to do an extra row and that will match up to your beginning. So just if, if it's not, create one more row there and that will go together. The thread I've got is coming out of the bottom bead and I've got my needle on there. I'm going to fold that over the end of my finger and with my needle I'm going to go back through the so that bead there and the bead to the right. So the first and then the second on the right hand side. When the thread comes through, you'll see that that pulls those in. Okay. And that's taking my bead needle through the third row and up. And just pulled the tension a bit here because I had a loop, so just watch for that. And then the fourth row bead to the right. So that was on the separate side. So we're just working that up and zigzagging across, pulling them in together. So now we're on the fifth row. And we're pulling that across and so forth, all the way to the top. I'm just going to take that nice and steady so I make sure I'm not missing any of the beads out as I go up. That's just my thread made a loop and has gone around the ring. So let's just pull that back. Oh, it's been fiddly. It wants to slide behind, which we don't want it to do. There we go.
and I'm out of the top right hand bead here. Okay, I'm just going to turn this round so I'm working more comfortably from the top. So that's the ring bought together now. And then I'm bringing my needle back down to going diagonally of the beads, which would have been to the left, but I've turned the project slightly on its side. And I'm going to create one of my first knots to tie it, to finish this project off. So you're going to take your needle and you're going to find one of the threads that's running between. So I've ca caught under my needle one of the threads that was running down the rows. So I'm going to go th through with the needle and you'll notice now as I'm coming up a loop of thread here. So I'm going to take my needle through that loop and guide that knot down to hide in between the beads and then go back with my beading needle through that bead, so where I've just created the knot, and the next two beads. So I'm pulling that through, and we'll be getting rid of this starter bead in just a few seconds. So I've come down, so I created one knot there, and now I'm gonna do a second knot, third knot and then out and then we'll cut that off with the precision scissors. So we're going to go under the thread, you just want to try and catch one. So one of those threads that's going under the beads, create your loop. So there's my loop here. Go through with your beading needle and tease that knot down. Back through the beads. And I'm just going to do a third one. And now I'm just going to take my needle all the way down and out the bottom. There. And get the scissors as close as I can to take away that excess thread that's no longer required. There we go and all those knots have tidied away. And then there was our starter bead, so we obviously don't want this thread hanging around here. So if you hold your bead and just hold the thread as well, it should just nicely slide off, leaving as our thread end. Pop your needle back onto that. Okay, so threaded the needle there, and you're gonna go back down the next two beads and finish with your knots. So you can do about two knots on this side and then cut away your excess. doesn't matter if you can't come out at the bottom like we did before, you can trim away your excess thread here. So I've done two knots and I'm taking that off. So I cut away that excess thread and then we have that fabulous spiral wave pattern going all the way around this bead, beaded ring. So these can be wear, worn with your selection of midi rings 
and larger rings to create a really interesting effect and adding the variations to those. Thank you for watching our tutorial today. Give us a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And remember, you can subscribe now to our YouTube channel, if you haven't already, to see all of our latest designs. Until next time, bye.